Hello guys, me Monkeys the Gamer here, and welcome to Next Generation Console Battle PlayStation 4 vs Xbox One. As of this video, we will be comparing what we know about the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Already I can say that we know the names of both consoles, obviously the PS4 and the Xbox One. We know that their press conferences um, have already passed, the dates were February 25th. Uh, 20th 2013 for the PS4 and May 21st uh, 2013 for the Xbox One. We know that their project code name was Orbis for the PS4 and Durango for the Xbox One. We have had the console design for the Xbox One that they showed us at the reveal on the 21st of May but we have not seen the console design for the PlayStation except for a blurred video showing us different parts of the consoles. Some people hate this um, on the PlayStation side that they haven't showed the console, um, but the, some people also hate that the Xbox design makes it look uh, very boxy and very uh, DVR or VCR like. So, you know, there there is a problems with both designs, but we yet, uh, have not yet seen the PlayStation 4 design. So. Uh, now passing on to the controller design. I like that the PlayStation 4 has improved their controller. It's finally a change. If you go back to all the controllers in the PlayStation consoles, the DualShock, DualShock 2, and DualShock 3 were pretty much the same. They really never changed until maybe the DualShock 3 where they added the triggers, the wireless uh, capability and uh, you know that's pretty much basically the only big change. And now with this new PlayStation 4 controller we now have the share button and which is a new button. We have a mic and a touchpad on the controller. We are now able to connect headphones into the controller just like on the Xbox controller. And we now have um, rings around the analog sticks which improves your grip on the analog sticks and is what a lot of people were um, jealous on the Xbox about that we now have on the PlayStation a more comfortable grip for your fingers. Now on the other side the Xbox controller stays with the expression when it ain't broke don't fix it. The Xbox One controller looks just as comfortable as the Xbox 360 controller except with the improvements required to make it very comfortable. The one thing that really annoyed me about the Xbox 360 controller was the battery pack. Apparently later on they removed that for later 360 controllers but really everybody already bought their controllers with battery packs so I didn't really notice when I went to people's houses to play the Xbox 360. But they have now removed this battery pack, it's no longer there, and it seems like the um, sockets that the triggers go into are not as large as where before it would hurt my finger uh, because um, the knobs underneath the triggers were so big, now they are much smaller uh, it seems, and the controller looks fairly comfortable, There's looks like there's more grip on the analog sticks and it looks like it won't uh, wear out as quick as the Xbox 360 I, I know that whenever I go to a friend's house to play Xbox, um, their analog sticks are completely worn down and smooth and have no grip on them anymore. As with me and my PlayStation controllers, I have not ever really used them uh, out so much. Like, I have not noticed a huge difference. The grips are still there even though you can't really consider them grips. More like wrinkles, I guess you could say, in the dome-shaped analog sticks. Now. They are both capable, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, of Blu-ray and DVD, supporting both of these um, discs. Now, this is not an improvement for the PlayStation, but it is an improvement for the Xbox, because in previous console, they, were, uh, they chose to go with HD um, DVDs instead of Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray came out of top on top, and HD just... Uh, fell out uh, and just was not as popular. Now the RAM is probably the most interesting part so far because this is the only true advantage between the two consoles. The PlayStation 4 has 8GB 
GDD R5 of RAM and the Xbox One has 8GB DDR3 and the PlayStation 4 has a better RAM. GDDR5 is better than DDR3. Now, further CPU. The PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One both have an 8 core. And um, for their storage, the PlayStation 4 has not yet been announced, but the hard drive for the uh, Xbox One is a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now, for their second screen, or um, kind of like the Wii U pad, the Xbox is continuing on with Smart Glass, which we saw um, on the 360. I didn't really know much about it because uh, I'm a PlayStation fan, not an Xbox fan. But the PlayStation does have the PlayStation Vita that is um, supposedly required um, by all games to have a form of compatibility with the PlayStation Vita, which is definitely going to be cool and makes me think about buying it a little bit more. I'm sure it'd be awesome to sit on your toilet and play some Battlefield 4 on a handheld console or a handheld um gaming platform. Now, both these systems will have cloud storage. Now, if you don't know what cloud storage is, cloud storage is a model of network online storage where data is stored on multiple virtual servers. Pretty much what it means is that it's not directly on your computer, it is more on a pool of storage where you can access it from uh, different platforms. Um, now, mandatory game installs. This has been confirmed for the Xbox One, but it has not been for the PlayStation 4. Now, used game fee. This is something that really has been bothering people. Now, the Xbox One, um, we have a maybe, but I think it will most likely happen. And definitely, if the Xbox One does it, it is still to be announced for um, the PlayStation 4, but if the Xbox One does it, the PlayStation 4 will do it because, you know, it sucks, but um, if the other, uh, their competitor does it, then they don't need to not do it. They could do it as well because it's not a problem because you can't say, oh, this console doesn't have it and we have it. So, the always online connection. There was a lot of assumptions that the Xbox One would have this, and I think it would have had this, but because of the bad reaction of the public, uh, it does no longer have the always online connection. Both systems do not have always online, that's nothing to worry about. Now, Skype is confirmed for the Xbox One, and it's said to be announced for PlayStation 4. I have doubts that it will be, that I'm pretty sure Skype won't be on PlayStation, but they've never denied that um, Skype will not be on PlayStation, that's why it's to be announced and not uh, a no, a definitive no. Now for motion control, the PlayStation has the PSI that we are used to, the new PSI, uh, bigger than the iToy and the PS3i. And it has compatibility with the controller that now has the move bar in the front, uh, which will definitely be cool. Now, obviously, even though I'm a PlayStation fan, I have to admit that the Kinect definitely seems a little bit more impressive. Definitely scary, but impressive. The Xbox One has the Kinect 2 that seems more um, useful and interesting. Um, the interface is more interactive with you because of the connect and uh, definitely the connect seems very cool and better than the PlayStation I from what we know so far. Now voice commands have been confirmed for the Xbox One but they are considered to be announced for the PlayStation 4. We don't know if they're coming yet but we'll see. Now um, subscription fees are both to be announced for both. Now I'm not sure much about subscription fees but uh, they're to be announced for both. Both um, both consoles will have a USB 3.0 storage possibility and for live streaming, they say it's to be announced here because of the graphic I have acquired, but I believe that the PlayStation 4 will have live streaming because they have partnered with Ustream and the sharing button will probably be uh, to live stream onto Ustream. So I think that's gonna happen. For the Xbox One, 
Uh, I doubt it will happen. I don't think it will, but they might uh, just to uh, compete with their uh, competitors for this live stream option. Now, both these um, consoles will, com will be compatible with Bluetooth 2.1. It's uh, not really a, uh, an improvement that much for PlayStation, but for Xbox it is uh, because it's something new and improved on the Xbox One. Now, for your reputation preservation, um, the trophies will be ported and uh, for PlayStation and achievements will be ported for the Xbox One. So don't worry about all the trophies that you acquired if you had like some platinum games. Don't worry, you won't lose all of that. All your hard work didn't go to nothing. I have friends that take it very seriously and uh, really care about their achievements. Don't worry, your achievements will stay by. Now, for the AV hookups, we've got HDMI, 4K support, uh, analog component, RCA, and optical outputs for the PlayStation. And now on the Xbox, we have HDMI input and output, 4K support, and optical output. Now, there are good and bads on these sides. The good thing is on the PlayStation for the, the people that... Um, don't have those high quality TVs and can't use HDMI's or components can use the regular analog which is the yellow um, white and red and you know if your TV is a little bit high quality you could still use component which is the um, green blue red and then the red and white um, audio as usual and then if you have the really good TVs you can use an HDMI with the uh, and if you have a surround sound you could use optical output um, which is a good thing which gives you lots of possibilities now the bad thing is that since the Xbox one has HDMI input only uh, as it seems the that means that the Xbox one will most likely come with an HDMI input uh, or output sorry um, and uh, like a cord to plug it into your TV an HDMI cord and the PlayStation will probably come with the regular old analog yellow uh, white and red cords which means that you'll get a high quality um, um, input cord with the Xbox one and you won't get a high quality one with the PlayStation where you'd have to go buy an HDMI to use it as with the Xbox you get that great quality right out of the box uh, now they both have Ethernet and a form of wireless connection which is awesome and uh, that's pretty much all for my coverage of the Xbox One versus the PlayStation 3, uh, just their specs wise. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about were the exclusives on PlayStation versus the exclusives on Xbox. Um, personally, I think that the PlayStation exclusives are much better at the moment. I like PlayStation exclusive better. You could pretty much name almost uh, like a bunch of popular PlayStation exclusives such as God of War, uh, Uncharted, Little Big Planet, uh, Bioshock, etc., etc., uh, Ratchet and Clank, and stuff like that, which are awesome exclusives. And for Xbox, you can't really think of any, at least I can't, other than Gears of War and Halo. Um, and personally, with Destiny coming out uh, for the PlayStation, made by the the creators of Halo. Uh, I personally have no jealousy on the Xbox. The only thing that I've always wanted for PlayStation that was never on Xbox is Halo, and it was an exclusive for play, uh, for Xbox only. But yet uh, now we have Destiny, which is similar to Halo. Hey, it's not exactly Halo, but I could live with it, and it's definitely cool, and seems like it will be a cool game. Now, um, you know, definitely for the exclusives right now, PlayStation looks at the top. They have definitely have established high quality exclusives compared to Xbox but Xbox has announced that there will be 15 exclusives uh, for the Xbox one and five of them uh, already exist so there's gonna be like 10 new exclusives I believe so that's definitely a cool thing for um, the uh, Xbox uh, community I personally have chosen the PlayStation 4 as my console, uh, I've always gone with PlayStation since the PlayStation 2. I've always bought PlayStation. So uh, it's more of a choice of loyalty than uh, 
preference even though most people find the PlayStation 4 better even though if the PlayStation 4 was worse than the Xbox I would still choose it just because of my uh, preferred console so please you know choose whichever console you prefer really there's not much difference other than maybe the RAM um, that is different for both systems um, where the PlayStation is better and that's where it might come on top really but other than that both systems seem pretty similar and pretty much the same you know maybe your interpretation of smart glass and uh, the PlayStation Vita might uh, you know if you have a tablet already you download the app I'm not sure if you have to pay for it because I don't use smart glass but uh, I'm sure that the app is definitely cheaper than the PlayStation Vita so um, you know, really just it's up to you to interpret which um, second screen is m more uh, more um, preferable uh, to you uh, and which one is nicer so please I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video and uh, see you later guys me monkeys out Thank you.